Hello everybody, um, it's me Camilla and Martha here for listing review number two. It was really good to get everyone's feedback and so many positive reactions last time and so many people volunteering their own listings so we're really grateful um, and we've chosen one. So we have chosen, you can see this, it's a hand knitted striped cushion cover and it's by Helen Stewart from Knitted Up North. So that's the back can see that's the front um, and we're going to go through it today so we've done the same as last time we've looked at the listing and then we've tried to take it to pieces and delve into where we think its strengths are and where, what we think could um, we could do to improve it um, so if you're new to this series what we're doing um, is it's a listing review so we're going to focus on one product in each episode um, and then use that product as an example to show you things that you can do in your own shop so that your listings can be have a better chance of being seen and being bought and that's both within google and within folks itself or other search engines we always say google don't we but we there are other search engines too yeah there are other ones Google's the one we really care about yes i read the other day that it accounts for 96 percent of all search traffic Something like that. I try not to think about it too much because that seems to be a lot of power. But anyway, that's a whole yeah. new topic for another day. It's a whole new topic. Okay, so um, this is the cushion here. This is one of the images from Helen's current listing, and that's the title: hand knitted striped cushion cover. Um, and this is how the listing looks at the moment on Folksy. So we've got hand knitted striped cushion cover and then the description and a series of photos as well. So is there anything you'd like to say about this listening to start with what your initial kind of impressions are Martha about it? Okay I think I think the main thing to say is so I'm like a, a hobby a hobby knitter uh, kind of self-taught knitter um, and the thing that's obvious to me is actually this, this product is really well made and there's a lot of skill there. Um, but I think one of the things that kind of stands out is that probably the photos don't do it as much justice as it, as it actually deserves. Um, and hopefully people will see kind of later on in the video that I'm, um, well, familiar had a play and kind of restyled some photos, which I think made a massive difference. Um, but as well, I think the way that we're just sort of going about this, um, particular listing is a bit different from before because before um, we were specifically looking at keywords and, and search and today we're talking a little bit more about branding and about how the presentation of, of what you make especially when it's something with a lot of skill and time that's gone into it um, can really be kind of make or break so I think that's the difference to last time. Yeah it's quite a big contrast actually from last time isn't it I think the way that we've gone about it um, hopefully it kind of they work side by side with each other as well so people get something from the last one and something different from this one um so that's that's the listing as it was on folksy um and then step one this is where you came in isn't it yeah so um so camilla you and i were just talking about this a minute ago but often um when when we want to make things we naturally just want to make the things that we want to make um, but sometimes making what we want to make isn't always the thing that people want to buy. So um, because knitting has been such a massive trend in, in recent years, the way that I approached this was to try and see um, what the actual products are that people are searching for around, around knitting. So we've got this massive knitting trend. That's good because it's a big trend, but it's bad because there's quite a lot of competition. Yeah, so we had a. I had a look after um, after sort of talking to you and seeing this at Google Trends, which is a tool that we haven't really talked about before. So it's, um, I think it's kind of it, it. You can't get as maybe as precise or specific with it as you can with some of the other tools like Uber Suggest. But it's quite nice to have a look at what people are looking for and how that change, how that trend has changed over time. So whether it's kind of peaked and is now dipping or whether it's something that is continually rising and it is, you know, it's getting more and more popular or whether it's kind of, it's way past. Um, so you can just go to Google Trends and as you can see here, I've typed in um, knitting as a topic. So you can type it in, you can type in a keyword as a 
topic or as a keyword and you can see you can even um, you can see how that trends over time whether whether it's more popular or less popular and you can even change the time period so you can specify you know in the last few months and you can really drill down or you can go bigger um, so the interest in knitting as a topic this slide shows interest from May 2005 to May 2019 and where it dips it's actually seasonal so it kind of shows you that most of those uh, peaks they're around November, October, November, and then it and then it dips. So almost every one of those dips is um, is in August. But you can see, like Martha said, that it's it's continually rising the trend from sort of 2005 um, uh, all the way up to kind of 2018. The other interesting thing about that as well, Camilla, is that it doesn't look like it's slowing down. No, it's not it doesn't. Going down again. It's just going up, up, up. So. Yeah. Exactly, because normally that you know you do see that dip at the end, or you kind of see something. But I think it it hasn't peaked yet. The peaks are quite consistent, aren't they? So it shows. I think as a maker, it shows that it you know knitting is still really popular. People are still interested in knitting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, this one a saturated field like knitting is quite a kind of busy, busy area. So that's good because you've got this opportunity to sell all kinds of different products that you would associate with knitting. Um, but I think, you know, around the time that some of the platforms we love, um, Etsy, Folksy, they started 13 or 14 years ago. That was when, that was like the beginning of the online craft boom. Mm -hmm. And we've come like quite a long way forwards from that. And now just to be doing something handmade isn't, isn't necessarily enough. Um, so I think that, that now everything's more competitive and that kind of demands, um, it demands the makers to do more research into trends, to know um, kind of what colors are on trend, what designs are on trend, what's kind of happening out there in the world. And just to create more of a feeling of brand, that's, it's, it, don't, don't be put off when I say that because it, hopefully this listing is going to show you that it's not such a hard thing to do. Um, but I do think, for, for buyers, kind of the level of what they want has gone up. And in a saturated field like knitting, that's probably never been more true. So like I said before, um, the approach that I took was rather than looking just at this cushion and trying to sell the cushion, looking for the right products and the right opportunities within knitting, the things that people are actually searching for, and start with that rather than just make what we want and then work out you know, how to sell that afterwards. And there are, you know, there are lots of people do make and and then want to try and find a way to sell. It's just we're not saying that that's wrong. We're just saying it's very hard to then sell. You can't you can't sort of go into that with that expectation that I've made this. Now I'm going to list it and now it's going to sell because it's kind of not really taking in the market into account. And you need the market to want what you're making or you need to then create that desire for them. Don't you? Absolutely, yeah, I think like people. I love people making things. I just, I actually think that's just the best thing in the world. And, you know, if you make something and never sell it, that's still amazing. Yeah. But then if you're kind of getting into the game where you think, okay, now I really want to sell what I make. You can't ignore things like design trends and you can't ignore what customers are looking for. You've got to try and start to bring those things into your work as well. I think it's fun. I like doing that. You know, it's all branding and it's exciting. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so if you're if you are in a saturated market or something that's very popular like hand knitting, how do you find the opportunity to sell what you're doing? Okay, so I mean the first thing that I did, I um, I went to Google um, and I basically just put into the search bar um, trends in knitting 2019, something like that, and then. Um, it, was just, it was so straightforward. I read a couple of articles from places that I trust, like, you know, a big sites, big knitting sites. And um, these five things came through two or three times. These things came through. Um, there were these themes for 2019. And the, these themes are going to go across, you know, all kinds of products and all kinds of um, things. This is what happens. Um, so me and my friend were laughing the other day because we were both wearing kind of this aubergine colour and she had it on like two or three times and I had this aubergine top on. And it makes you realise, you know, you go to the shops, you, you're actually buying what's there, which is led mm. by trends. So um, one of the things that came through for 2019 was in colour was coral. Who knows why? I'm sure there's a reason, but this bright kind of coral colour. 
Yeah, well, it's the Pantone colour of the year this year. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, that's all over the place. Um, and then there are other themes like a well-organised home, baking, cake decorating. Obviously, Bake Off has made that massive in recent mm. Indoor plants still seems to be a big thing. And the word of the day, sustainability. Everybody is on about sustainability. It's massive in the news. Climate change is massive. And, and rightly so. That is a big kind of trend at the moment so we're thinking much much bigger now than knitting but starting to think how could I find opportunities within those trends and within my niche um just to make things that kind of more on point yeah yeah, does that make sense, Camilla? yeah absolutely yeah and they might not seem kind of direct but it's about starting to just be aware of it isn't it and seeing what's happening and and picking parts that fit what you're doing or that spark ideas and just to understand what's going on it is that zeitgeist thing isn't it what's Absolutely, happening yeah that's the word yeah yeah okay um so then what did you do next martha <laughs> okay um right i think we've got a slide to to show this but but, yeah. but last time we did this webinar we kind of introduced people to uber suggest which is a keyword tool so keywords are, are one of the things that you can use in in the way that you write your listings and you write the, the copy in your shop to help you get found one of the things um so uber uber suggest you could go back to the last webinar we did just had a quick revision it's pretty easy to get the hang of um but if you go to uber suggest you can type in a, a word and it will show you how easy or hard it's going to be to get near the top of the search results for lots of different things so i went to uber suggest and typed in hand knitting or knitted cushion and just had a look at the results um so i think if we go to the next slide camilla Ah, there yeah. we go. Okay. Hand knitted cushion. So that's what I put in. So um, you can kind of see the top result, hand knitted cushion. That first column is volume 20. That's, so that's pretty low. Yeah. Um, but actually, if you look at the next one down, hand knitted cushion covers, that's much higher. So there might be more mileage in that. Yeah, which is, I wouldn't expect that. I think yeah. that's odd. It is a little bit odd, yeah. Yeah. Um, as well, if you look on the right hand side where it says keyword overview, you've got a picture of Neil Patel, who kind of invented Uber Suggest, saying this keyword is competitive. There's a 56% chance you can rank. That's not what we want. We don't want a competitive, mm. we want a higher chance of being able to rank. So, hand knitted cushion, straight away you're thinking, okay, search volume is quite low. Neil Patel's telling me it's a bit competitive. I need to find something better. I need to find a better product, a better keyword around hand knitting. Yeah. Shall I go to the next slide? Go to the next one, yeah. Okay, so th basically, this is what I did. And I, hopefully, I'm going to be able to share my screen with you in a minute and show you this. I'm going to stop sharing mine. Okay. There we are. All right. So, if I just go into Google, hopefully, you should be able to see me doing this. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. 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 Okay, so if I type in, uh, ooh, can't spell hand knitted cushion and just see what happens. Okay, so this is here are results. This is where you can get a good idea of um, searcher intent. So what you do is you can scroll down to the very, very bottom. And can you see where it says searches related to hand knitted cushion? Mm -hmm. You can start to get clues here. So it's so a free knitting pattern. So knitting pattern comes up over and over again. So already that is something that you can start thinking about for your product range. If people really want knitting patterns, should I necessarily be making the end product? Maybe I'm going to be selling knitting patterns. Maybe that's better. Or maybe um, both. Maybe you could pick your kind of, you know, if you've, if I, I know that um, Helen's made knitting patterns and maybe you kind of sell it alongside so people can make their own versions. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, then as well, you've got something about things being free. Okay. If we're in yeah. the business of selling stuff, that might seem like a problem. But not necessarily, because if you start to list free patterns on your website, that could be a great way for you to get more traffic. So there's another clue and another idea for your business. Mm -hmm. Then we've got more clues like moss stitch, basket weave, Aaron knit. So it's, it feels like people are especially interested in certain knitting stitches. So when you go to Google and kind of just put in, you know, something at the top, it starts to give you a load of clues 
you get the clues from the very bottom here and then you can go through the actual um, listings and start to see similar themes um, that come up. So this is what I did um, about around hand knitting and different products started typing in hand knitted blanket, hand knitted this, hand knitted that. I can't, I can't share exactly now what results came up because it's Google and you get different results mm -hmm. every day depending on different things. But basically that is, that is the gist of how you could um, I get quite a lot of clues about the kind of product you should be making. Yeah, and it feels like there's lots of videos as well, doesn't it? Lots of yeah, YouTube content. In a minute, but um, there are videos, YouTube, 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 which tells us that actually um, one way that people are knowing about knitting, finding out about knitting is on YouTube. If you've never touched YouTube and you're serious about selling knitted stuff, that could be a whole new avenue where you could do something really, really good. Yeah. So I'm just going to... Um, stop sharing that. Shall we go to the next slide, Camilla? Yeah. Go back to mine. Uh, here we go. Okay. All right. So that's all I did. I went into Google and just started typing in those products. And as I did it, there was a theme developing. The word chunky kept coming up. The word baby blanket kept coming up. The word blanket kept coming up so those three things I started to feel like okay it's, it might be hard for me to sell this hand knitted cushion but if I can market it as something chunky or if I decide I might fancy knitting blankets or baby blankets or patterns for those mm -hmm. things we've seen in results that could be something really positive for my business and something to build a brand around absolutely as well it's not that we're saying oh you should make blankets instead and you're suddenly going to rank for blanket it's just thinking a bit bigger isn't it thinking bigger and and obviously you know those things change all the time depending on a million factors going on in the world so mm -hmm. it's not like you can do this once and then forget about it forever it's kind of an ongoing thing oh what, what are people looking for oh what colors are popular oh why is everyone interested in um basket weave stitch all of a sudden it's those yeah. kinds of questions that you can ask yourself all the time and start to um filter into your ranges and the things you design yeah okay uh, oh. that's okay. the next one so i went back to uber suggest this time I, so i wanted to find out this um keyword chunky hand knit blanket is that better is it more competitive well, already you can see in the volume column, we've got 170 searches. So that's much higher. Yeah. This time we've got a 64% chance that we can rank. That's also better. So the clues that I found on Google, I've used in Uber Suggest, and it's confirming to me, okay, this is, this is a better, better product. This is a better way of getting found. Yeah. Okay. I think this is something that we can, that I come up with a lot, that um, a lot of the time when I'm searching for search terms for different things on Focusy, a lot of the results that I'm getting, a lot of the search intent kind of indications that I'm getting is that people are looking for patterns and tutorials. They're not looking for the final product for things that I think that are the terms that they would use to find a product. It actually, it seems like they're wanting information on how to make their own products so either the supplies or the yeah instructions or videos or how to's or something isn't it yeah it does and i don't i hope that no one is kind of disheartened by that yeah i just want to make things and sell them actually there's still a huge opportunity for you to be making things it's just that you know off the, off the top of my head i'm thinking now it could be that as you're knitting the thing that you're knitting you actually turn that into a knit along and video it you're still making yeah. Thing, but you're creating kind of content around that that actually people people want and then if you create a pattern you've still got to knit knit up the actual pattern because you need to photograph the finished product so it's not kind of saying don't make stuff anymore it's not that at all it's just kind of encouraging us to think more broadly about the things that people want and how how that can play into what we do yeah and it's also kind of showing you know maybe it's giving you ideas for the content that you can share on social media so maybe people want to like you said do a knit along on facebook or or on social media on instagram stories you could just say i'm going to show you this stitch today because i've been learning this stitch yeah. it's kind of it just shows you what people are interested in doesn't it although there is interest in those things yeah 
And then um, again, at the bottom of this slide, I've just mentioned YouTube. So if you just flip on to the next one, um, yeah. Camilla, that's, that's where you really can see um, the chunky handy on the right hand side, it shows yeah. you the top results, top three of YouTube videos. I just yeah. think that speaks volumes really about where people um, are looking for information about knitting. So if yeah. you're spending all your time on a different channel, I don't know where you might be, and actually all the attention in your niche is somewhere else, that could be another thing that you, you might want to reconsider to get kind of more traction for what you're making. I think it's also worth noting in that the social shares on that side of the screen as well, but the top results, you know, they almost always have a lot of shares apart from number five, from the dark side from Etsy you know they that they, they will have that will rank well because there's so many products within yeah. that yeah. um but the other ones they they will depend a lot on shares which will help um boost where they rank and it's the same for you you know once you've done the work in order to kind of be there you need to then share it and get people sharing it don't you okay shall I move on to the next one yeah Okay, so uh, this is about you were writing advice on how to write a new product description for this particular product. Yeah. So whenever I write a product description, before I write a single word, I ask myself, what is the one thing? What is the one thing that this product does? And the answer to that question is always um, an aspiration or a desire for something. It isn't something practical like it's got blue buttons or it's got a green ribbon because actually people buy, people buy trends, people buy aspiration. So you're looking for kind of the one, the one thing this product does. That's going to be like the, your first sentence. That's going mm -hmm. to be to get somebody in. Um, so when you find out what your keywords are, definitely put them in the title. So you'll find your keywords in Ubersuggest or another um, search tool, get them in the title um get them in the first couple of sentences or first paragraph um here we found out chunky hand knit hand knitted they're going to be really useful for getting found for this product um make sure the actual product name is in your titling tags so sometimes we see like we saw last time in the webinar um the actual noun of the of the of the product isn't in the title so if it's a cushion it's a make sure that's in the title it sounds really obvious but sometimes people don't always do that yeah more often than you think than you yeah think. and then keywords in tags as well is really important um another helpful thing in a product description is we've got to remember the things we're selling they're not essential everyday items people mm. don't need what we're selling we've got to make them feel like they do need it but actually the truth is it's more of a gift market so it's helpful to suggest to whoever's reading um, this is the perfect gift for um, someone who likes a cozy space or this is the perfect yeah. gift for someone who likes golf or you know you know whatever it is uh, for a mum with small children you know whoever it might be it's helpful to suggest that yeah and then the practical details um, I think sometimes people put these further up because they're not sure what else to say but practical things including um, you know dimensions or care instructions just put those at the end because yeah. people do want to know that stuff that can sometimes be the, the the deal breaker or maker with a product but it's not that interesting it's not why they're going to buy the product is it they're going to buy it because you created an aspiration that they want it or that it's the fits their need of the gift or something that but then they will check all those little things that you you know actually before i buy it can i hand wash it or do i have to hand wash it or you know so, those things. Yeah. so i just lay them out clearly at the bottom um, yeah yeah. So that's how we go about writing writing a new product description. Yeah, it's, re it's really good. I think that's really good for people to have to refer back to as well when they're writing listings. So uh, we had a go at rewriting the product description. Uh, and on the left, you can see what it was like before. And on the right, you can see uh, the changes that we made. So it's not actually, we didn't make massive changes in the product description this time, did we? Because there were kind of obvious things that were wrong or obvious keywords as much. No, um, I think the only things really were, so that opening kind of first sentence, I put with a nod to the trend for comfort and dual tone. So that goes back to kind of doing that quick bit of research. What's on trend right now? How does my product fit in? 
because we people want to buy something that's kind of up to date. So I put that as the as the kind of the, the hook. Um, and also what was the one thing? Well, it was going to add a lot of warmth and texture to your home. So you're conjuring up this kind of space where, oh, I'm going to be stylish and warm and cozy. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's selling actually an aspiration of how your home would want to be rather than just saying, here's a front cushion, which isn't as exciting. And then I've kind of gone on to um, get those keywords in, there's hand knitted in the second sentence. Um, that explains a little bit more about the pattern as well and the buttons, so a few more details. And then that third paragraph, it's ideal for anyone who loves to play with color and texture. So we're kind of now implying who this could be good for. Yeah. And then at the end, you can just see those practical bit, the practical stuff we've put at the bottom. Yeah. Um, so if we go on, I think we've got the rewritten listing here. Um, and I can't, I don't know if I can see this. Hold on, let me just move this bit out. Also written a new, I don't know if anyone can see it, but we've written new inspiration section as well. Uh, because that was missing before and it's just it's not that you have to fill it in but it's another chance to kind of show why you've made it to bring that personal element into it and also just to add more keywords because it still counts in in terms of internal searches and google it still counts as text and copy that it can read so we wrote um took this from Helen's um, introduction so on her home page so sometimes my ideas start with yarn sometimes it's a pattern but this one started with a yearning to create something chunky cozy and colorful so again you know reinforcing what you were saying before and bringing in that word cozy um, having seen all the chunky knits everywhere I wanted to create my ha- own hand knitted chunky cushion and one of my favorite color combinations purple and gray I added the purple and gray because when I was doing a Google search, I typed in purple cushion and it suggested purple and gray cushion. So I thought, oh, okay, that's interesting. So people want that color, are looking for that color combination. I thought it would be fun to make the cushion reversible too with one stripy side and one basket weave. I should probably have a, two words in basket weave actually. With beautiful big buttons so you can turn it over when the mood, mood takes you twice the gorgeousness. So I think it wasn't necessarily clear me on the listing before how nice I don't, I don't know if you can see this but how kind of nice the front and the back are that you can have it both sides and it's it's hard to get that from sometimes from a listing until you've got the actual product I think the inspiration section is really lovely because you know that folksy people are coming to folksy to for these stories to read these stories and get that extra value that added value so I think filling that in is um, really important yeah um, we there were various options, weren't there, for the title on this? Yeah, kind of went back and forth a few times, and I'm not necessarily sure that whether it's the right one. I think there are lots of ways we can go. So, I was, I think here I was more looking at it from an internal folksy search kind of way and thinking, uh, you know, chunky knit. We've kind of established that people want that, are looking for that generally, so it would apply the same on folksy. Um, also hand knit was one of the keywords we were looking for and then the purple and gray which came up through the google searches I thought people are probably might be looking for that and the stripes but there were lots of things we could we were thinking of including like basket weave or diagonal stripes or even hand knit cushion cover or chunky cushion cover because we haven't got the word cushion cover in there yes I, I mean we went backwards and forwards quite a few times with it didn't we but yeah um I think as well, this whole thing around chunky hand knit. So we had this, we had a conversation where we know that actually chunky hand knit, that, that phrase often applies to kind of more chunkier, chunkier things. Yeah. Um, but I still think that if that is a kind of, you know, a, a key trend or something that people are searching for, they could very easily come upon this cushion and think, oh, that's not the thing that I started out with. It's very much related and um actually i really really love that i really want to have that so uh we had a bit of a dilemma didn't we with it coming yeah up i think it's it's not too far removed from it is it um and also especially the back which is why i kind of highlighted the back that's more chunking it i think with chunking it i think of somebody like lauren aston making these big working with huge big needles she was one of the people that kind of created that trend yeah. Um, and built her whole brand uh, through it but 
uh, I think it kind of it is it does feel quite chunky when you see it it's um I think I think it's okay to use that yeah again it's just thinking about how you can fit in things I'm not recommending in a million years that you would pretend that your product was something that it isn't yeah. if, if there's a relationship there then it's it's good to kind of capitalize on it yeah um and then uh I'll show you the uh so if i just go for the tags first before we look at the photos so i had a look through the tags that there were before and we've just made a few tweaks to them really so um you can only have 15 tags on folksy so it's difficult to choose which ones to use one of the first things that i did was put purple which was in the tags initially into the material into the colors rather um, because they still count as clickable tags within Folksy, so they still counted as tags, but it you, you just means you freed yourself up with an extra one in the tags. Um, and then in the tags after, which you can see at the bottom, I've used more um, kind of a selection of short keywords, which are useful on or Folksy itself. So just having cushion in there can be quite useful, but also longer tail keywords as well. So cushion with buttons basket weave, chunky hand knits, chunky hand knits, as we said before, clickable tags, because if customers do click on them, or if the Google tag page or the tag page just show up in Google, it will be that specific one rather than it won't, it will just, it will either show chunky hand knit or chunky hand knits. It will show whatever's tagged with that exact tag. So for the really core cool ones, it's worth putting in both the singular and the plural. Um, I think there are other things that you could do. So you could have, um, you know, new home gift for mum, handmade home. You could have move them about on different listings and see if any particular ones of those makes more of a difference. And then added some more materials because it didn't say wool in the materials. So it's a small thing, but, you know, could, could be useful. Don't know how much impact it's going to have. Uh, but people quite often ask us about tags um and how much difference they make so i think it's just worth experimenting with them um and using the right ones because they do help google and they do help search results yeah um and then we re-photographed it i love these photos oh so um helen was kind enough to send me the cushion so i had a go yesterday morning at photographing it in different positions around the house different locations so these are just kind of taken in my home and I wasn't sure exactly what where what it would look good with um, and I think if it's your own product you've probably got the surroundings and the props that suit the product that you're making um, and you can kind of see what works with it and it will just feel right probably in your house you'll know how to style it and it's just kind of putting different things next to it so in the in the main image I tried putting some yarn in it and I didn't have the right yarns but it was to give that idea of in the initial product image in the initial main image that it is handmade and reference that and then I've also included a portrait shaped photo as in a tall photo so that's not the main image but it's an additional photo and that's so that people can pin it so we could pin it or other people could pin it because portrait shaped photos do better um, on Pinterest then I've shown a close-up of the back which shows the lovely buttons and also the basket weave so you get to really see that and I've also throughout tried to make sure that the tones I've gone through and edited the tones and the colours to try and make sure that they as closely as possible match the actual cushion because it's quite important with this I think if you're selling it on being a particular colour and then in the bottom right hand image I just photographed it with my sewing box against some wallpaper um, it's sort of trying to get people to understand the size and scale of it but also create something that's a nice photo that makes people it can kind of add warmth to it I guess as well and make it feel desirable so it's not just photographed against a plain background because that's not very exciting is it? I think the colours really sing, the purple really sings and the buttons I mean you can see how beautiful they are in that close-up. Yeah. And also that contrast you know you've got that tall one that you talked about pinning which is a brilliant idea and then you've got the kind of a little bit of pattern across the bottom. Yeah. And it kind of echoes those stripes somehow. So 
Yeah. I think it might be just worth, if I stop sharing my screen and we just go back to the original listing. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry, wrong button. Um, so if I share this again. Can you see that screen there? Yes. Yeah. So this is um, this is Helen's shop, yeah. knitted up north, and down here you can see the two listings. Mm -hmm. So I think first of all, the thing that I think is that the new image, the colours really do pop out more, don't they? Mm -hmm. It looks a lot warmer. It looks a lot more enticing. And this is the original listing. So if we click on this one, that was the original main image. And the cushion is so lovely and it, the photograph just really doesn't do it justice. You can't, you know it's a cushion or you expect it's a cushion, but it could also be something else, couldn't it? You don't yeah. necessarily know it could be a blanket. Yeah. Um, and then the, they're slightly out of focus. Um, that one does show the buttons in the back. Um, but that one is, it is quite out of focus. I think it doesn't really do as much for it. No, and it's quite dark. I think the thing to remember about the photos, um, and you know, I cannot take photos, not really, not great photos, but um, it's the whole thing again about aspiration. And it takes mm. a lot of time, you know, to style a photo, but it's so worth it. Like that yeah. investment time is so worth it because what you've got now, after kind of playing a bit with the images, is you've got this feeling of brand, you've got this feeling of colour and you know, the the person looking at the listing is making that leap. Oh, I can see that in my house. Or, oh, I'd like a patterned tile floor with a cushion like that. Or, oh, you know, you're really starting to start that whole aspirational thing. And actually with this listing, I think that's probably the most important thing. Yeah. Then just kind of picking up on all of that and making sense of all of those pictures. I think um, if we go to this, the revised listing, um, I think it's worth this was this was kind of a morning of playing around like a couple of hours of playing around and it is time you know it does take time and I'm lucky in that I've got a, a nice camera um, and I also really love doing photos it's one of my favorite things to do um, but I do think it's fun and I think it's really really important and I think once you've you know you could spend a day or two days um, trying to find your style for your photographs and trying to find sort of what suits you and collecting props and then wherever you go kind of be aware that you know have a look and think oh that would work really well in you know if in a junk shop or somewhere like that or a secondhand shop or Oxfam or something and you find something you think oh that would make a really nice prop and establishing this kind of almost library of things that you can use in your photos. So you could then have, you know, if, it, if for example, that floorboard worked well, then you know that you just kind of use that and you take your pictures on that floorboard. Or if people like these images with that floor, then, you know, or if that suits, then kind of keep using that or buy tiles, go to a specialist tile shop or get some reclaimed tiles or some of those lovely cement tiles. There are loads of factories that produce those. Um, and they're really lovely and and sort of sets a scene that you can then just use and quickly use every time so there's an initial time outlay but then it will come down for every product and you just keep photographing using the same things and swapping in different props each time I think as well um so I keep um I keep a secret board on Pinterest where I basically just pin like product shots that I like yeah and what you can see is over time you see themes developing there so what i've realized is oh i i really like um product shots with kind of like a, um like a wheelie lining it might be a plant or or it might be a bit of ribbon or so that i didn't realize that until i started yeah and then you can start to take photos that are like things that you like so it gives yeah. you a lot of so you're not copying are you just a sort of establishing what it is that appeals to you in different photographs as a customer yeah so i think you know that's not my finest ever photo but i'm uh, hoping that it shows how lovely that back is and that in these photos now you can see the front you can see that it's handmade or you get clues that it's handmade you've got a pinnable image you can see the reverse and then you've got a detail shot so you can see the color and things I, I honestly feel now kind of looking at the price so the price is 20 pounds 
I mean, I think that you could double the price, genuinely double the price, maybe even more. And that, that listing now commands a higher price because yeah. Um, re-photographed and um, made. and also you've got then a whole lot of photos that you use on your social media channel you know I've got kind of uh, probably 15 good photos that you could then spread out and you've got a consistent look and I know we talk about consistency and uh, you know I find that really boring when everything's exactly the same but you know that you need some consistent elements in order to create a brand um, it's just how you do that whether it's with the colors or with the props or the way you photograph it but you're starting, you know, I could see that she could start to build a really strong brand with this and really highlight her amazing knitting. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me go back to the, uh, to this one. Okay, I think we're back. So they, those are the photos and those are the tags. Um, and we talked about before other things that you can do as well to promote your work. Um, and these are some ideas that you came up with, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, the first one we've talked about, um, there's an appetite for video around knitting. Um, that doesn't have to be, again, like taking photos, it can take a little bit of practice, but it doesn't need to be anything to cause you stress because um, Instagram now is, I really think it's moving away from very polished, very finished, mm -hmm. um, flat lays and things like that to kind of just stuff in progress. So there's yeah. nothing to stop you just getting your iPhone, getting on IGTV, on Instagram, and making just little videos of you, of you doing stuff. I think people are a bit fed up on Instagram of it's all feeling very curated, aren't they? And they want to see people more and see people's hands or people working, I think. Yeah, I just want it to be genuine. So, yeah. you know, if you're taking your knitting on the bus, great, show us you knitting on the bus. Yeah. If you're, you know, knitting in the car park while your kids are coming out of school, then show us that. It's, it's definitely moving to, to a much more kind of authentic, genuine, less polished thing, I think. Yeah. Um, so then I've just said the second point is just to consider changing the shop tagline. And I know for some people that could be probably quite a big deal if you've started to build a brand around a tagline, it's not so easy to change but if you do feel you can change it and put, you put a keyword in it that's probably going to really help mm -hmm. um your about me section needs to have those keywords in as well and it just needs to sound really natural um so the way forward with copy is to write for people not to write for robots but still incorporate those keywords in and write as as you as well don't i would avoid saying you know we produce this and trying avoiding that trap and trying to sound overly professional just you know you are a person who's making things you're a brand potentially you know ideally you have your brand but you are a person an individual not some mass corporation absolutely and that's what will set you apart just, just mm. being genuine like that so um i have said fourth fourth point people feel differently about this um but it could be that you could even if it's something as simple as just following more home and lifestyle accounts on your social media um, and kind of commenting on what they say and getting involved with them. That's going to help to send more interest back to your own account. So again, it's just that thing about being much more aware of what's going on. What are these bigger, what are bigger people doing that I can start to play into? Yeah. Um, and finally, we've already said it really, but current trends. So at the moment, sustainability is everything. So how can you take that and do something positive with that? Whether that is um, recycling an old knitted garment maybe or recycling all those ends of wool that you've got lying around your house or I don't know, plucking ideas yeah. out of it. And you know, that's also a good, a good positive thing for the world, isn't it? It's not just a way to kind of promote your brand, but maybe do a knit -a -thon for raising money for something or yeah. I, you know, there's lots of ways to do things, aren't there? So many things you can do, yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, other things that we, how else it could be optimised. So I had a look at the actual listing, checked, you know, those simple things that, especially if you're copying and pasting a listing or copying and editing a listing, uh, there are things that can sometimes go astray. So it's in the right category, just always double check that. It's in home cushions. It's quick shipping. Yep. It's in within three days. And also on the listing, Helen did say, if you're abroad, it might take seven to 10 days. So she, you know, was great at saying that if you're overseas, um, check that there's 
re you, your shipping costs are reasonable. And in this case, yeah, it was free, but it didn't say that anywhere in the listing. So I think just highlight it. Sometimes um, you can even put it in the title or have it in some of your titles if you don't want to waste the space so that people know that you do free listing. Put it in your bio, you know, even put it in your tagline possibly. Um, free shipping is great if you can offer it. Uh, additional shipping costs are also set to zero in this listing, which means that if somebody chooses to buy two things from your shop, they'll only be charged shipping once, but you have to physically write a zero, write a naught in that. Otherwise, if they buy two things, they will be charged two lots of shipping. Um, so just check that. Um, check that, oh, there's a rogue bracket, sorry. Uh, check that you're you've enabled your sh shop for stripe or you've enabled stripe in your shop so that it's just a smiley face just a smiley face yeah um so that it's so that if a customer comes they don't just have the option of paying by paypal they can also pay directly by card but you need to have stripe enabled for that um is the is your about me section filled in it was in this case and just you know like you said kind of concentrate on that because it's a really important thing for buyers isn't it to be able to read more about you yeah. check all your links are working that there's no links to kind of broken pages like your facebook page so it just instills confidence in the buyer we, we've talked about before uh check that the dimensions are on there um the other thing that i thought was that i wasn't clear from this from the original listing whether i was buying the actual cushion or just the cushion cover because it said cushion cover but then as it, you went down at the bottom, it said you will also get the cushion pad. Um, so some people might already have a cushion pad, possibly. Just make it clear. And if you are selling the cushion cover only, then make that the original listing and then make an added option, which is called a variation, to also add the cushion pad. And then make sure that you charge enough for that to cover the extra shipping. I hope that makes sense. That makes sense, yeah. Um, and I think that's it, really. That's. I think that's it. I think um, you've got to put your prices up, Helen. <laughs> it's got, it's yeah. a really, really lovely product, and um, yeah, it's just a, just a case of presenting that in the right way and just thinking, you know, really wide and big about the context that it fits into, and just telling people about it. Yeah. And thinking about photography and how you're presenting it, because, you know, it, like we said, in that saturated market, it's about a, a building a brand could be really critical. It's how you can get seen and photographs and how you present yourself is a really big part of that, isn't it? It is. Yeah, so it's kind of a bit bigger than just a normal product listing this time, but hopefully it's helpful. And we've tried to cover both, both aspects of this. So also re rewriting a listing that we think is optimised as much as we can, but it, again, forms part of something bigger. Shall we talk about like taking over the entire world next time? Yeah, I think so. Let's just go really big. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's I think that's it. Um, if anybody's got any listings again that they'd like us to have a look at, uh, send them to us at community at folksy.co.uk and um, follow Martha on Instagram. Where else are you? So I'm on Instagram at the Stitch Writer. I'm on Pinterest. Um, same thing at the Stitch Writer, and my website is www.thestitchwriter.com. So if you Brilliant. remember the Stitch Writer, then you're laughing. Very good consistency. Well done. <laughs> well done. Okay. All right. Bye.